Before proceeding, please make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell icon for upcoming videos. Ameloblastoma is a non-cancerous or benign tumor of the jaws. They are slow-growing and locally aggressive tumors. Ameloblastoma is a tumor of odontogenic epithelial origin or their remnants. The possible odontogenic tissues that are thought to give rise to an ameloblastoma are as follows. The enamel organ of the developing tooth germ, remnants of dental lamina, also called epithelial rests of series, remnants of Hertwig's epithelial root sheet, which are left after root of a tooth is completely formed and are known as epithelial rests of molasses. The next possible origination site for an ameloblastoma is the reduced enamel epithelium, which is the epithelium that covers and protects a tooth crown after the enamel of a tooth is formed, and until a tooth erupts into the oral cavity. And finally, ameloblastomas may also arise from the basal cell layer of the oral epithelium, and this is considered the rare most origination site of an ameloblastoma. Ameloblastomas can be divided into four main types, and this division is based on their four different clinical presentations. These four types are listed as the conventional solid or multicystic ameloblastomas, unicystic ameloblastomas, peripheral ameloblastomas, and malignant ameloblastomas. The conventional type accounts for 75 to 86% of all cases. Unicystic types for about 13 to 21% of all cases. The peripheral types which arises in the gingival soft tissues and accounts for only 1 to 4% of all cases. And finally the malignant type where the tumor exhibits a malignant behavior and it's the rare most type occurs in far less than 1% of all cases of ameloblastomas. Since we can see here that the majority of cases comes in the conventional solid or multicystic forms Therefore, in this video, we are going to talk about the clinical, radiographic, and histopathologic features for the conventional solid or multicystic type only. So let's begin. The conventional solid or multicystic form occurs mostly in the third to seven decades of life with no sex predilection. About 80 to 85 percent of all cases occur in the mandible, most often affecting the molar ascending ramus area. The remaining 15 to 20 percent of ameloblastomas occur in the maxilla, usually in the posterior molar region. Ameloblastomas are often asymptomatic and varies between smaller lesions with no obvious bony expansion to painless, massive, and destructive lesions of the jaws. Ameloblastomas larger in size can even cause thinning of the cortical plates of the mandible resulting in fluctuations or even bony fractures in the affected area. Tumors in the maxilla often have a tendency to invade into the maxillary sinus or the nasal floor. Sometimes when the tumor in the maxilla is extremely large, it even has the tendency to invade into the cranial cavity, the orbital cavity or the ethmoidal sinuses as well. In such cases, the ameloblastoma becomes life-threatening and needs special attention. Since ameloblastomas are slow-growing masses, this slow growth gives time to the periosteum of the bone to lay down thin layers of newly formed bones ahead of the lesion. These thin layers of bones cracks under digital pressure and the phenomenon is called axial crackling. Coming to the radiographic features, under radiography, ameloblastomas presents as a multilocular radiolucency with an irregular and scalloped bony margin. The lesion may either have smaller loculations giving a honeycomb-like appearance 
or it may have larger loculations, giving a soap bubble-like appearance. Resorption and displacement of roots of teeth are often observed in ameloblastomas larger in size. The lesion can sometimes cause impaction of associated teeth and may resemble a dentigerous cyst. One variant of ameloblastoma that possesses different radiographic characteristics is the dysmoplastic ameloblastoma. Under radiography, the dysmoplastic type shows a mixed radio-opaque and radiolucent appearance. And this mixed radiographic appearance is due to the osseous metaplasia of the dense fibrous septa of the bone. Let's now move on to the histopathologic features of ameloblastoma. Under a microscope, ameloblastomas possess a combination of cystic and solid features. And based on these cystic and solid features, ameloblastomas have six microscopic subtypes. These subtypes are listed as the follicular and plexiform patterns, which are considered the most common types. Other less common histopathologic patterns include the acanthomatous, granular cell, desmoplastic, and basal cell types. Let's talk about each one of them in some detail. In the follicular pattern, islands of epithelium, which resembles enamel organ of a truth germ, are seen embedded in a mature fibrous connective tissue stroma. The islands of epithelium consist of a core of angular cells, which are much like the stellate reticulum of an enamel organ. Surrounding this central core of epithelium is a single lining of tall columnar ameloblast-like cells, the nuclei of which are located at an opposite pole away from the basement membrane. This phenomenon is called reverse polarity. In the plexiform pattern, ameloblastoma consists of long anastomosing cords of odontogenic epithelium. Tall columnar or cuboidal cells makes the outline of these epithelial cords and the central part of these cords consists of loosely arranged epithelial cells. The connective tissue stroma where these cords are embedded are loosely arranged and vascular. Cyst formation is relatively uncommon in this type and when a cyst occurs in plexiform pattern, it's more often associated with stromal degeneration rather than cystic change within the epithelium. The acanthomatous pattern almost resembles the follicular pattern. The difference between the two is that in the acanthomatous type, the central part of the follicular epithelial islands undergoes squamous metaplasia. These metaplastic cells fill the central core of the epithelial islands with a keratinaceous material. This type is often confused with squamous cell carcinoma or squamous odontogenic tumor. In the granular cell pattern, the epithelial cells of the tumor are transformed to granular cells, having abundant cytoplasm filled with isonophilic granules that resemble lysosomes. This type is most often seen in young patients. And when an ameloblastoma undergoes such granular changes, the lesion is named as granular cell ameloblastoma. In the desmoplastic pattern, ameloblastoma contains cords and islands of odontogenic epithelium. These cords are smaller in size and are embedded in densely collagenized connective tissue stroma. The basal cell variant of ameloblastoma is the least common type. This type shows excessive proliferation of uniform-looking basaloid-like cells in several nests. Stellate reticulum or other centrally placed cells are usually absent in this variant. The cells present at the periphery of the cells are cuboidal rather than columnar in shape. This type often resembles a basal cell carcinoma of the skin. The treatment options ranges from simple enucleation and curatage to end-block resections. Since a higher recurrence rate is observed following enucleation and curatage as compared to n-block sections, 
Therefore, in majority of cases, M block resections are considered the treatment of choice. If you think this video was really helpful, please do like the video and subscribe the channel. If you have got any questions or suggestions, you may write them down in the comment box. Thank you for watching.